was very um, uh, fussy. He hardly ever slept. He had his own. He had his own schedule. Um, if he got up whenever he wanted to get up, and that might be in the middle of the night. Or it might be um, late morning. Yes, he did. Um, he had, um, there were a lot of words he couldn't correct, he couldn't say correctly. His behaviors were uh, anger, uh, um, meltdowns. He would have really huge meltdowns. He um, crying a lot. Um, uh, he would want his drink. You know, I don't know what he called them, but um, he when he. He would want his uh, his drink, his nana, you know, or his or his baba, or helter helter skelter type of behavior. I mean, it it was um, just like his walking and his um, and his. Uh, I mean, he would laugh inappropriately. He would. Um, he loved being the center of attention. But if it was too much attention, then he would start to hide uh, behind my coat, um, behind uh, his sisters, behind um, anybody that he could hide from. I remember his first year of um, um, the first year of preschool. He would hightail it for underneath the. Underneath the um, the table, the, and that was the small table. So I couldn't like go underneath and drag him out. <laughs> and the said, "That's okay. Let's just, you know, wherever whatever he feels comfortable at, let's just let him." Uh, the and for most of the, I think he came out when it was time for snack. He's. Um, he would eat anything and everything, but but again, it had to be on his schedule, um, like spaghetti. It had to be how much he ate and um, and uh, and how much he ate. And did I just say that twice? <laughs> um, how much he ate and if he would eat at all depended on him. I worried about how much food he was getting um, inside him. He was very, very thin. He had um, like three slim. He was also afraid of some of his clothes because he had a different. They had a different feel to him, which is why we knew that. Um, uh, that he had a sensory disorder because he was very sensitive to um, um, different different textures, you know, like the tags in the back of your shirt. Mm -hmm. No, that's that wasn't that wasn't okay with him. He always had to cut out all of his shirts, and I'd say, "Hey, just wait a minute. I'll do it for you." Hold on. The next thing you know, he had done it for him, and um, and uh, and he'd have a hole in his shirt, in the back of his shirt. He had um, he had physical therapy. Like they would do some rolling over. He had to roll. He had to be on a big ball, a big rubber ball, and they would have him roll over on it. And he would get scared when it would get to about here, 
And so she would say, he would say, no, 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 no. So we'd have to bring it back this way to where he felt more safe. So the next day we would do it again, you know, back up, then go down, then go down. Oh, I'm scared, I'm scared, let me back up. So we go back up. He had speech therapy. He would um, go through the um, ba 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 ba. Um, what's the name of this? He wouldn't know. So, um, um, okay, I'm going to roll the ball to you. And she'd say, oh, I just said it. It's a ball. Can you say ball, Casey? Ba, ba. And she'd say, good, I'm going to roll it to you. And she would roll it to him, and it would just, she gra he would grab it like this, and then play across the room. So that, when, when he cooperate, that meant that he really didn't want to play those games. I would like for him to um, be accepted. I would like for him to have friends that accept him for who he is. I would like for him to live in either a group home or um, uh, I would like that, that, that there be an adult that, um, that can help him uh, learn how to handle his bank account. Um, I'd like him to be able to have a job. You know, I would just like it to be as normal as can be. Um, and I know that's not going to happen. I know that it's, that it's not going to be, um, I know he's not going to fit the normal um, criteria as like my other kids were, but um, uh, but, but I would I, that's what I pray for um, and hope for that he that he be able to have have friends that really are a supporting type friend and then a friend that would just like him because of who he is. When your mother does drugs, any things she can get hands on when you're in her tummy. What? How does your disability affect your life? Um, affects it in all different kinds of ways. Some people, some teachers don't understand me. Don't get how I act, it's hard for me to sometimes make friends. Does it make school hard? Um, yeah, it's hard because when I, when they want me to be work in class, I, if it's too much, I won't do it. It's either overwhelming or either I'm having a bad day. What's your favorite part about school? My favorite part about school is having the extra uh, classes, like electives that you can do, like uh, auto shop, metal shop, wood shop, and specifically hanging out with your friends and those type of classes. What's your least favorite part about school? My least favorite is homework, most of all. Do you have someone who helps you do your homework? Um, I go to tutoring sometimes to have it helped out on my friends if they have the same history and the same teacher. Uh, I'll have them help me out with it too. Are you in the special ed classes? Yes, I'm in uh, English, 
and I believe math. I work better in groups instead of um, just alone, so that helps out a lot in all my classes. What do you want to be when you grow up? I just want to be a mechanic um, or a chef. Yeah, what are some things you're really good at? Um, I'm good at taking apart stuff um, and fixing it. Um, that's about it. <laughs> what do you want people to know about your disability? It's hard for parents to have a kid like this, like me, because it's how, like for example, for doing homework, you can't really um, have them expect them to do homework because it has to be on their own time. So, yeah. <laughs>